Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls and friends beyond the binary, it's time for the podcaster that's here to provide a recharge, whether, you know, whether you're like whatever the heck, you know, you don't, whether you're USB-C, USB-A, uh, uh, whatever your attachment, like lightning, whatever those other thousand other ones are, I take all plugs, uh, all around the world to help you plug in and recharge. Uh, so you could say that later tonight or tomorrow, cause it's time for sleep with me. The podcast that puts you to sleep and oh boy, are you going to say, ah, uh, cause if I could just have your attention for a few minutes to tell you about Brooklyn and sheets, uh, I have my new Brooklyn and sheets, my new duvet. And this was a company and a sponsor. I was so happy to discover it because you spend a third of your life in bed. And having good sheets uh, that you can slide into, that you can snuggle up to, pull it up to your chin. Oh, my goodness, it feels so good. Uh, so really, investing in uh, the best sheets is going to help you get the best to sleep. And that's where Brooklinen comes in. Uh, they're the best, most comfortable sheets. And I'll be snuggling up in them later. Uh, and the great thing is there's no big markup. And you can upgrade your nightly routine. And Brooklinen will help you feel more rested every day. They were founded in 2014 by husband and wife team Vicky and Rich Fulop. And they had a philosophy. Uh, the most beautiful, comfortable home essentials, but no crazy prices. Uh, so they got rid of the unnecessary markups and fees. I don't know if you knew this, but, you know, the really, really nice bedding is marked up like 300%. And Brooklinen is the fastest growing bedding brand in the world. 15,000 five-star reviews. Brooklyn and Sheets were named the winner of the best of the online bedding category by Good Housekeeping. Uh, they come in versatile colors and patterns, and you can mix and match to complement your decor, which is a really a huge, huge feature. Instead of just getting what the store has, Brooklinen is luxury uh, bedding underpriced. You got to try these sheets. Uh, get on there right now. You deserve it. You deserve some nice new sheets. My Brooklinen sheets are the best, most comfortable sheets I've ever slept on. Brooklinen.com has an exclusive offer just for my listeners. You get $20 off and free shipping when you use promo code SLEEP with me at brooklinen.com. Brooklinen is so confident that they offer a risk-free 60-night satisfaction guarantee and a lifetime warranty on all of their sheets and comforters. The only way to get $20 off and free shipping is to use the promo code SLEEPWITHME. That's one word at brooklinen.com. That's B-R-O-O-K-L-I-N-E-N.com. And use promo code SLEEP with me, right, Mr. Bard? Uh, thanks, Brooklyn, and because these are the best sheets ever. Uh, this episode was also made possible with the help of uh, Chris Posty Posterson from Sounds Like an Earful, who did our theme music and edited this episode. Carl W., who edited this episode, Jonathan Mann, Honor Lullabies, Scotty and Jennifer and Kenny, Honor, Honor, Honor Artwork. I'm at Dear Scooter on Twitter. I uh, also want to thank the patrons that support the show. And the listeners have their own Facebook group, and I want to thank the moderators. Sarah, Stacy, Laura, Keith, Julie, and Jennifer. And uh, that's it. What do you say we uh, get on with the show? Uh, hey, you all night tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble getting to sleep, trouble staying asleep. Well, welcome. This is Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. We do it's a bedtime story. All you need to do is get in bed, turn out the lights, and press play. I'm going to do the rest. Uh, what I'm going to attempt to do is uh, create a safe place where you could set aside whatever's keeping you awake, whether it's thoughts, or feelings, or physical sensations travel, changes in routine or weather, whatever scheme of wake I'd like to take your mind off that. I'd like to distract you. I'd like to put you at ease and keep you company here. The way I'm going to do it is I'm going to send my voice across the deep dark night. 
I'm going to use a lulling, soothing tones, pointless meanders, uh, tangents, uh, extra, a lot of talking, uh, going off topic, but fr- fr- friendly, I'm, I'm friendly, I'm here to help. If you're new, thanks for checking the show out. I'll just tell you right now, it doesn't work for everybody. It's a podcast uh, to be here while you fall asleep in the structure show. For the first uh, four or so minutes of business. Uh, then we have an intro. The intros are about 12 minutes because they're a show within a show. Put some people to sleep. Some people listen uh, for their own enjoyment or amusement or, uh, you know, while well, they're putting on lotions and salves and creams and things and bombs. Or, you know, getting the, getting all the covers set up and, you know, getting ready for bed, I guess was what I was saying. So the show starts business, a long intro, show which is you can fall asleep during that, you could skip it, or you could listen to it. And then tonight we'll be talking about um, uh, a recent episode of Doctor Who, a re, 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 recent episode I viewed, uh, where we actually, this is the first time I said heard someone say Doctor Who. Like, why did you just call it? Why don't you get a name? In this episode, it was Spock, uh, was a suggest, suggested name. But here's the thing about uh, the Doctor Who recaps you don't have to watch Doctor Who. They, uh, the recaps are just like a bedtime story you would hear as a kid. They resemble about as much a di- of Doctor Who as Doctor uh, One, uh, Four, and Seven resemble each other, which I don't know if they do. Uh, but, but that's like uh, the numbers that came into my head. You'd say, which episode was Scoots talking about Doctor Who about one? And you'd say, well, I don't know. Was there ever an episode where they played beach volleyball the whole time? Because uh, it wasn't. I think he was talking about beach volleyball. That won't be this episode, but that could be something to say. Well, so, so okay, I got a question. He's doing it with... Uh, does the doctor wear, what does the doctor wear to play beach volleyball? Did you say beach volleyball or beach volleyball? Oh, uh, well, the, both. Uh, the doctor wears whatever the doctor wears. Uh, okay, so anyway, th- then I'll talk about Doctor Who. Then we'll have some thank yous at the end. And all told, I'll be here about an hour. And the reason is, this is a podcast. You don't really need to listen to it. You could just kind of listen or barely listen, or you could totally listen. I'll be here till the end to keep you company. And that's the other thing. I'll be here to keep you company, to take your mind off of stuff, and not necessarily to put you on pressure. There's no pressure to fall asleep. Uh, there's no shoulds, uh, woulds. Or, I mean, there probably are shoulds and woulds and coulds. But, uh, you know, this podcast is just meant to be your companion, your friend, your boar friend, your boar bay, your boar cuz, your boar bestie. Or your Borsus, as I said recently, uh, to be here as you drift off into dreamland, uh, to, to take your mind off stuff. I think I said that a few times. And the reason is, like, I, I've always had trouble falling asleep. And sometimes people, uh, and I don't think they do it intentionally, uh, but not everybody is always the best at whatever that word, fancy word is for saying, oh, that's legit. Like, like I don't think it's legitimizing feelings because that doesn't really sound... That neither sounds clinical nor uh, uh, it makes me feel good. You say, oh, boy, why don't you come over? We'll do spend the day legitimizing feelings. You say, what is that, like a board game? That No, like a, like a TV movie pilot? Was that one of the board games? Yeah, it was a board game I was going to launch. Uh, it was going to be the next big thing, legitimizing feelings. It was, it was more of a card game. Yeah, yeah, you, you like it was all about legitimizing feelings or not, uh, and it was complicated, and it, it didn't launch. I did some play testing. Uh, unfortunately, I did a mad. I, you know, I got worried about asking anybody to do any play testing, so I just play tested with myself, and then I got so competitive with myself that uh, took all the fun out of it, it took the joy out of legitimizing feelings. So then I just went back to recording podcast intros. But I don't know, sometimes, like, particularly now when I'm recording, I've got, I have some strong feelings coming up uh, every once in a while. And sometimes I can't even put words into them to describe them. They just say, well, I guess if I describe my feelings, it says, I don't totally feel comfortable being an adult, uh, 
would be to summarize for the blanket term for all the feelings I'm going through. And sometimes people say, give you great advice like, eh, well, just, you know, suck it up. Uh, okay. Okay. Get over it. Okay. Uh, you know, maybe they, they give you some more specific. Well, why don't you try to name those feelings? And I said, well, I did. did uh, if I had to name them, I'd say feelings I don't like. Uh, would that be like a Jeopardy category? Because that would be it. Well, no, try to, have you tried to talk to your feelings? You see, what am I, like uh, Dr. Doolittle or, uh, of the feelings? No, I just want to um, tell you what, I'd just like to get rid of these feelings is what I'd like to, well, you can't just get rid of them. you got to deal with, oh, do, okay, have you dealt with your feelings? Well, believe me, I was dealing out a game of legitimizing feelings earlier. And that's where all these feelings came from, because then I said, another part of me was counting the cards. And then a third part of me was uh, watching my dealing with dissatisfaction. And then I realized that that I was like supposed to be doing something else more productive than playtesting a game uh, that could have legitimately changed legitimizing feelings and just board gaming. So yeah, now I have these feelings that are like, uh, oh, so have you, you? So you haven't dealt with them. You're, are you avoiding your? I say, okay, enough with it. What, what, like, what if there was a world where where we just said, whoa, that sounds tough. Uh, what, what, tell tell me, how does it feel? I don't know. It feels like being an adult, kind of. Oh yeah, I know, I know that. I do, and I do. I could say, I guess I could say, maybe this is how a game of this is why legitimizing feelings didn't launch. Uh, you say, wow, that's uh, sorry. That's uh, being an adult is tough. Uh, it can feel that way for sure. I can see it in your face. And uh, strangest thing that we're adults, and somehow it kind of says, well, hey, when the heck did uh, and I see? Yeah, I hear you. Well, how about we, why don't you deal out, what's that game there? You, what do you play test in a game? Tell me more. Well, yeah, I don't want to, uh, uh, no, 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 not that game, the other one. Oh, yeah, this game is called uh, Napkin Crash. Uh, it's actually, this is a real good game. Uh, to, to Like, uh, I take a napkin, I, I use a napkin, so it's also a way to uh, repurpose, uh, not super used, uh, moderately used napkins. And I crumble them up, and then I pretend they're planets uh, or asteroids. I call them asteroids. And then I kind of have them crash into each other, and then I pretend. Oh, so are there any rules to the game? Oh, there's a couple rules, yeah. There are some rules that, like, uh, use slightly use napkin. I guess napkin that wouldn't be termed gross. Uh, That's one rule. Don't use a new napkin, because would we, you know, then we'd have feelings about that. Uh, no, just no rules. Just have fun and uh, pretend. Uh, usually, I make space noises. Like, uh, uh, I guess it's less of a game, more of a pastime. Uh, oh wow, I like it. I like it. I can see. Uh, does it feel good when you crash the uh, napkin asteroids into one another? It does feel pretty good. Why don't you go ahead and, when I take over, even though you're you and I'm you, you crash those, and I'll take the rest of the intro from here. Okay. Yeah, because, I mean, you like, uh, it's too much time, people telling you, what you know, go ahead and do, just enjoy playing with those napkins. Hey, Scoots here. Uh, another version of Scoots, almost the same, but I'm not kidding. I, I've been legitimized, so I feel a little bit, or whatever the fancy word is, when you say, Vind- it's not vindicated either. I'm not sure what that feeling is where you say, wow, those are, uh, I almost had it. it, it like, it's like not vindicated, legitimized, or acknowledged, uh, v- validated. That's the one. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I feel a little validated. I validated my buddy over there. So I'm a little bit more chill, and I didn't even stop the recorder or nothing. And it's really the role the podcast may serve is to take your mind off stuff, uh, to offer you a distraction. You say, well, why don't you put the play testing aside and just to crumble up some used napkins. And uh, you could even do napkin racing or uh, listen to a goofy bedtime story because I know how it feels uh, when you can't sleep, whatever the reason is. 
I don't know. I, I like, uh, I say, hmm, wow. Uh, that's, uh, uh, let me see if I can help. And the way I help is to tell, uh, uh, goofy rambling bedtime stories, or in this case, uh, barely resembleable, uh, version of, uh, you want to talk about validating, I guess in some sense I'm invalidating the sensible plots of Dr. Who, uh, but not really, because I, I do enjoy the show, and that's what uh, the secret sauce is. Uh, the, you know, I enjoy the, the episodes are so full that I can really, um, you know, make them fuzzy and sleepable. Uh, so I'm glad you're here. I guess uh, that's the main thing, and I hope I can help uh, carry you off into dreamland. I appreciate you coming by. It takes a few tries of the podcast to, to put to, for people to say, what is this thing? And will it work for me? Uh, but I hope it works for you. Uh, and that's it. I really work hard. I strive and I earn to help you fall asleep. So thanks again for coming by. Good night. And before we get to the story here, I want to thank tonight's sponsor, Brooklyn. And uh, do yourself a favor. Like I've gotten to this uh, like level where it's like I sw- switch my sheets out every week. Uh, so having like uh, two or three sets of sheets uh, makes a huge difference so you can slide into that comfort. Uh, so d- support Sleep With Me and take Brooklyn and up on this amazing offer. $20 off and free shipping uh, if you use promo code SLEEPWITHME at brooklinen.com. It's $20 off and free shipping. And all you got to do is use Sleep With Me at checkout. It's brooklinen.com. B R O O K L I N E N dot com. And you sleep with me at checkout. You can also find the link at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sponsors or right in our show notes. And let's uh, keep the show going. All right. So here we are. We're talking uh, series one, episode nine of Doctor Who. Uh, empty Child is it, but it opens with the TARDIS uh, in space. And it seems to be chasing a tube. We have some funny dialogue that we'll get to. Doctor's really working hard. Uh, I said, does he have a stand? Is this a standing desk? Is this a standing cockpit? Uh, But I don't even have to ask because most of the time it is. And then there was some green light on their faces, Rose and the Doctor, as they talked. And then a shot of Earth and the episode opens. Uh, So, yeah, this is the first time I've seen the TARDIS in pursuit of something. And it moves through space better than you would think it would, but not so great. And Rose is like, Doctor, what's up? He goes, it's mauve, mauve, mauve. Uh, and I said, move? He said, no, mauve, the color. Uh, universally recognized color for a uh, big, big, uh, you know, capital T rhymes with uh, P and stands for uh, tube. And Rose said, I thought that was uh, red was that color. He goes, no, that's humans. He goes, uh, everyone else uses mauve. Uh, you and the red alerts uh, create so much misunderstanding. And he says, it's got some basic flight computer. I'm uh, just like in, in a, like he's, uh, he's created a secondary drive uh, and hooked himself into it. So the, she goes, uh, how safe is this? He goes, totally, uh, 100%. Just like Scoots would say. And then he says, well, reasonably, because then the TARDIS starts to have some uh, problems. And then it shoots into some sort of vortex. He goes, oh, no, it's uh, changing time tracks, getting away. And Rose goes, what is it? The doctor goes, I don't know. She goes, well, why are we chasing? He goes, it's mauve and it's, you know, trouble. And he goes, it's 30 seconds from London. And that's when we see Earth and that's when it opens. Uh, then we see, oh, oh, I also noticed on the Doctor Who logo at the beginning, there's glowing pips or rivets on there. So I wanted to talk to and mark that, just tell everybody. And we see the TARDIS in between some apartment buildings. There's laundry on the lines. So they are big apartment buildings in an urban area, London, presumably. Someone's watching the Doctor and Rose. Rose has a Union Jack t-shirt, which will be many jokes, uh, but someone's watching them go through blurry glasses or something. And I don't know if this was on a set or uh, on location, but they did a, like a little U-turn uh, to simulate going down one alley and another one. I liked that. Uh, then this is, they talk about psychic paper, uh, re-explain it for any new people. people. Or as a reminder, uh, Doctor tries to show Rose psychic paper. She goes, yeah, we are, I already know what psychic paper is, Doctor. Uh, let's see what the uh, dialogue said. 
uh, Rose, go, Rose goes, uh, let's see, they get out. He goes, uh, how many times do we got to end up on Earth? Uh, and Rose goes, every five days, or is it just when we need milk? Uh, and the doctor says, of all the species in the universe, why do we get that out of cows? And then they're looking for this tube. Doctor goes, it's got to be within a mile. Maybe it was here a month ago. We're, we're, we're behind it uh, with the time tracks. Uh, and Rose goes, jeepers, creepers. The doctor goes, you want to drive? And she says, you, we were a little behind it. How much is that? And he goes, a bit. Uh, I thought that was funny. And she goes, exactly a bit. And then he goes, ish, a bit ish, I guess. And she goes, what's the plan? Are you going to scan for alien tech or something? And the doctor goes, no, I'm going to ask around. Uh, Dr. John Smith, Ministry of Asteroids. That's what a psychic paper says. And she goes, yeah, I know. He goes, this is psychic paper. Rose goes, you bragged to somebody else, dude. I've, I, I know. And the doctor goes up to a warehouse door, and there's music coming out of it. Uh, and he goes, what do you think we should go in there? I'll use my sonic screwdriver. And Rose goes, scan for alien tech. Uh, and he goes, what do you mean? She goes, give me some Spock for once. And I, th- I assume she's talking about Spock from Star Trek. And then the doctor says, what about your shirt? And she goes, uh, well, it's too early to say I'm taking it out for a spin. And uh, I think there was one more joke about Spock. Let me see. Not very Spock. Oh, that's what she said. You're not very Spock, doctor. And I said, the Spock? Uh, and then, yeah, she says, Get, come, come on, do some Spock. But he's working a lot. Then a little kid is looking for his mommy. And so they split up. Rose tries to go help the kid looking for his mom. She says, hey, I'll help you find her. And what does this say? Declan Info, Indiana Jones. Oh, something. In- oh, D- doctor goes into an Indiana Jones level club. Uh, even a femme fatale maybe is singing. There's candles. Uh, there's upper class. There's uh, officers, uh, and then the doctor, uh, like uh, the, the singing steps, and the doctor really enthusiastically claps. Uh, very enthusiastic, like great job. Then he just ha- hops on stage uh, and he starts doing stand up. He goes, uh, "Hey, excuse me. By the way, uh, can I get everybody's attention really quick?" He goes, "Anything fallen from the sky recently?" And this was like a, like a, like a double level bit, uh, because he the doctor he says uh, he just he says anybody see anything from a falling from the sky? And he goes deadpan quiet. And then we go to Rose like, helping the kid, and then we go back. Uh, and the doctor goes, is, "Did I say something funny?" And the audience just starts cracking up. He goes, uh, "He goes, you need to fall some find something fall fell out of the sky." People are like, then. Uh, you know, a wake up alarm goes. Everybody's like, oh, we got to get back to work. Lunchtime's over. They put an obscure stand up on there. Then Rose is trying to help the kid. She just grabs a rope and starts climbing. I had to WTF that one. Uh, then we see more Dr. Comfy Air. Oh, he's more Dr. Comedy. So it's, it's, it's switching back and forth. Uh, Rose is on a rope. Yeah, doctor picks up, a, uh, oh, he picks up the date by looking at the posters on the wall, realizes it's uh, uh, the 40s, I think. Uh, and Rose's rope's attached to a barrage, barrage balloon. Barrage balloon. What would I say in Syracuse? Uh, pod, pod, podcast, podcast. Yeah, sure, you betcha. Uh, barrage balloon. But they call it a barrage balloon, I think. Uh, and uh, she calls to uh, the doctor, and she starts floating off with this balloon. She's going for a—I guess it's a hot air balloon ride on a bar, barrage balloon, barrage balloon. And you know, London's in uh, the midst of a WW. Uh, doctor goes and looks for Rose. He picks up a cat and talks to it. He says, uh, "Hey, cat." Okay, okay, Kid, how you doing? Uh, also, Rose has some more jokes about her shirt. Uh, and the doctor goes, hey, Kid, how you doing? One day I'm going to meet some human that doesn't just wander off when I tell them not to wander off. Uh, and the cat says, meow, you know, I kind of like you. Um, picks up a cat and talks to it. Then his outside phone rings on the box, not the inside phone, the outside phone. And he's stunned. 
which is kind of surprising because the doctor doesn't ever get stunned. Uh, two question marks. And then a girl appears, Nancy. She says, by the way, don't answer that phone. It's not for you. And the doctor goes, how do you know? She goes, I know. Just don't answer it. And he goes, how's it ringing? It's not hooked up to anything. And he, he turned turn to look at the phone, turns back. Nancy's gone. And he answers the phone. It's actually, the, he goes, hello, how may I help you? The doctor's speaking. And they said, I guess he was in business mode because he was very serious. And then there's a kid looking. He goes, hey, have you seen my mom? And the doctor goes, this number, are you calling collect, kid? Because this is a... Uh, and the kid goes, are you my mom? And he goes, no, 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 no. And then uh, the kid goes, how'd you call this? It's not even a real phone. And the kid goes, uh, by the way, I'm looking for my mom. Uh, keep an eye out for her. The doctor goes, okay. And he goes, Rose, are you in the police box or what? Uh, uh, the kid hung up on the doctor. I get to look at my notes. See, he went, he said, how'd you call? The kid just hangs up. You know, the whole, he didn't do the whole Prince Albert and the can thing. So he calls and sees, sees roses in the box uh, in the TARDIS, but she's not. So he runs off. Uh, oh, then we see Nancy. She's like a little bit like a, an Oliver level, Oliver Twist type character at this point. And there's an unhappy family. They have to enter. Their dinner's been interrupted. There's some nice theme music with uh, to give Nancy this good orphan theme. And she uh, gets starts collecting food. And then we see Rose is still on the balloon. And then we get a glimpse of this ja dashing hero named Jack. Like straight out of a Marvel movie. And he's at the officer's club. He's got these high-tech binoculars. He says, sorry, old man, to another, uh, not old man, but another officer. Uh, then we see the orphan girl again. Uh, she sees this like a how like a, a huge dinner laid out, and no one's eating it. So she goes outside and she whistles. All the neighborhood kids come in for a feast. And she's very mothering. Uh, then we go back to Rose, who's on the rope. Uh, and the dashing hero's like, "I got to go. I see a young woman on a barrage balloon. I'm going to go help her." And uh, so he heads out. Oh, one of the things Nancy took is shortbread. I just saw that too. Uh, but then he puts a tractor beam on Rose. Uh, Rose on a rope. I liked that. Uh, he puts a tractor beam on her. Uh, Nancy's looking around the house. Uh, this is I'm, I'm watching it right now. And she must smell there's turkey. Like a whole like a holiday dinner. She's got a big grin. And then she goes to call the kids. Uh, and when Rose is in the tractor beam, she says, uh, the, the dashing hero Jack says, uh, keep your hands and feet inside the tractor beam at all times and shut off your cell phone. And Rose goes, you're kidding me, right? And he goes, she, he, she, he goes no, it really messes things up. Uh, we don't just say that. And, yeah, she says, yeah, nobody believes it. And then she does. And he says, oh, thank you. And she says, it's great. You know, I'm, I'm in the sky with a Union Jack across my chest, but hey, at least my phone's off. And uh, Jack is in this uh, very modern spaceship. And, and then he said, the computer says, uh, uh, what does it say? Non-contemporary contemporary life form. And doctor says, she's not around here from around here. No. Yeah, Jack the hero talks to the computer. Uh, then he brings Rose down by tractor beam, catches her, like, uh, and they have a little, like, uh, flirty moment. He goes, you're fine. Tractor beam can, you know, be a little bit confusing. And Rose goes, hello. And the doctor goes, hello. And then she says, hello. And Rose is good. She's like, sorry, I said hello twice there. A bit of a doll, you know, uh. And the doctor says, you okay? And Rose says, well, I'm a little light. I ha like, I'm going to sit down for a minute and shut my eyes. So she does. She sits down, takes a little nap. Uh, then we have Nancy serving supper. More and more kids are coming to supper. Nancy has a lot of rules. One portion per kid, one slice per kid. Uh, she, she says, you know, treat everybody with respect. We're guests in this house. So no comments. Everybody wash up. Uh, there's some new kids there, and Nancy says, what are you, sleeping rough? And the kids go, yeah, yes, miss. Best dressed, or you know, these are very, uh, like, Oliver-level orphans. They're very well-dressed, too. 
And she says, everyone chew properly. And they all say, thanks, miss. Thank you, miss. Thank you, miss. And then they're passing around and they'll sit here. Thanks, miss. And it's the doctor. And every, all the kids are surprised. Adult in the room. They don't know if it's, it's the doctor, though. And Nancy says, don't worry, kids. Uh, and then the doctor plays along. He's totally in his element. He says, good in here, isn't it? Uh, who's got the salt, please? Yeah, put doctor in his element. He loves that. And the doctor goes, so you lot, what's your story? And the, one of the kids says, what do you mean? And he goes, well, you're living on your own, living rough. Uh, another kid says, what are you, a copper? And he goes, the doctor crushes it. He goes, I'm not a copper. He goes, what's a copper going to do for you, arrest you for being hungry? And he goes, doctor says, if it's 1941, you sh- your kids shouldn't even be here. He goes, you should have been out in the country. And they go, yeah, well, we, the, the city's got food, so we're here in the city. And they, they go, it's better here. Uh, a little mystery. And the doctor goes, uh, so, this Nancy, you're big-hearted, uh, keeping track of these kids and getting them these big meals. You wait until everybody goes and uh, hides out, and then you go find a big family meal. He says, seems like a decent plan for, for now. He goes, brilliant. He goes, if it's not Marxism, it could be a West End musical. And then Nancy says, why you, what do you want? Why are you following me around? He goes, uh, well, I, would you, I still can't figure out that phone thing, that trick. Uh, and she goes, I told you not to answer it, and that's all I'm saying. And then the doctor goes, I'm looking for a blonde and a Union Jack. Uh, and all the kids laugh. He goes, a specific one. They didn't just wake up and decide this, and the children laugh uh, more. And the doctor goes, anyone seen someone like that? And Nancy takes his plate away. She says, she goes, your doctor goes, what's the matter? She goes, you took two slices. And she goes, no blondes, no flags, anything else before you leave? And the doctor goes, yeah, actually, I'm looking for uh, something else that fell out of the sky, like a tube ship. It looks like a pickle. He draws a picture. It looks like a pickle. And the children know exactly what it is. Uh, Doctor, what does this say? Just Bosti. A busted for take, gets busted for taking two slices. Uh, Then the kid comes looking for his mommy. Ends up it's a little bit of a game uh, that all the kids play. And he's it. uh, And they're still playing it. So they say, okay, we got to get out of here. This is like the game Chasing. Uh, but it's who's who's finding my mommy. Uh, so it's fun. All the kids go back and try. And Nancy's like, everybody get back and hide. But then the doctor says, Nancy, uh, he says, Nancy, why are you letting a game interrupt at dinner? Uh, he goes, there's something else. To, he goes, there's something, another element to this game that I don't understand. And then the kid outside makes the phone ring. And the doctor goes like that. And then he makes the radio go on. And he goes, the person that sits got more power than, he goes, this isn't, I don't know if the rules of this game are fair. Then the kid makes a, like a wind up monkey go and say, hey, I'm looking for mommy. And Nancy bails uh, and the kid goes through the mail slot because the doctor's not sure if he's going to play. And the kid goes, doctor goes, kid, mommy, there's no mommies here. Just me, just us chickens. And he goes, actually, just this chicken. And then the kid, I don't know if he tried to trick the doctor. He goes, hey, come on, I just want to play this game. Uh, Open the door and let's play together. And then the doctor decides to open the door, but the kid's already gone. And they do do a really good uh, thematic connection, you know, to the doctor with these kids and everything in this situation where it reminds him of his past. Also, we'll see, like, uh, very similar to uh, Star Trek. This is a pro-human Again, I just said, is it, can you be jingoistic about humans? This is more about Britain being great. Uh, but it's still, the doctor's a big fan of humans, uh, humanity, and uh, everybody in the UK. Uh, then we're on a spaceship. Rose wakes up, and she's charm, charmed and awkward, uh, and charmingly awkward. And uh, she, so she wakes up with Jack, dashing Jack, uh, and uh, she sees his psychic paper right away. He goes, uh, first they go, hello. She goes, hello. He goes, okay. She goes, let's not start that again. 
And she goes, who are you? And he shows his psychic paper. He goes, uh, Jack Harkness, 133rd Royal Air Force, American. Rose goes, you're lying. That psychic paper tells you, but you can tell it what he wanted to, but you accidentally told it to put your dating profile on there. And Jack says, how did you know? She goes, I got a friend who has psychic paper. She goes, so you're single and you work out, eh? And Jack goes, oh, boy. Uh, yeah, she goes, yeah, you got to think about it. And she hands it back to him. And he goes, oh, so you just, uh, you kind of have a boyfriend named Mickey, but you're uh, also very available. And Rose goes, uh, how about we talk without the psychic paper? And the actor goes, yeah. And she goes, yeah, well, this is a nice spaceship. And the acting is very, Rose's acting is very high level. Uh, yeah, she goes, this is like a Spock level spaceship. And Jack doesn't know who Spock is. And she goes, okay, I guess you're not local. And he goes, you got an LCD watch, a cell phone, and some fabrics that are like uh, from 20 years from now. You're not local either. She goes, you got it. And he goes, did you, uh, he goes, did you get any rope, uh, rope uh, scrapes? And she goes, yeah. And she looks out the window. She goes, we're in the middle of the sky just hovering. And he goes, here, I got some nanobots uh, to fix your hands, uh, nanogenes. And Rose is pretty impressed with that one. And then Jack goes, by the way, you can cut it out. He goes, I know what a time agent, I know you're a time agent. And Rose goes, oh, time agent, huh? And he goes, I've never seen a time agent fly by barrage balloon. And she goes, sometimes I get swept off my feet by balloons. Uh, da da And then uh, whatever he says, my nano, my nano genes rock. Uh, and she goes, well, tell them thanks. And then they're kind of smiling. And then Jack says, let's get down to business. Uh, drink some cham- champagne on ice. Up on the roof, uh, in front of Big Ben, and we see that he has uh, his ship is kind of cloaked; uh, it's almost invisible, which Rose kind of finds obviously strange to stand on an invisible ship. And she says, "Don't worry, Rose, you're standing on something." And then the doctor makes the ship appear, and she goes, "So you have an invisible spaceship tethered to Big Ben for some reason." And Jack goes, first rule of active camoufl- camouflage: park where you remember." And then they start pouring the champagne. Uh, then we see, oh, then this is a good scene. Nancy's like trying to hide some food for somebody. And the doctor says there, she goes, would you follow me? He goes, yeah, I'm, I'm, I got a nose for it. And she goes, usually people can't follow me unless I want to let them. And the doctor goes, I have, you know, my, my nose has special powers. And she, this one I really hit home with me. She goes, is that why it's so, uh, and he goes, what? And she goes, does your ears have special powers too? And I, I can remember the first time somebody made fun of the size of my nose. Uh, and I was like, really? I didn't like, uh, didn't really realize they needed, and they, I don't think they were doing it. They were doing it in a more friendly banter way. So I can relate to that. And I don't know if my ears are big though, but the doctor goes, what are you trying to say? And Nancy goes, I got to go. And the doctor goes, look at Nancy, you can't play games forever with this, this other kid. Uh, you guys got to take turns of being the one who's IT. And he goes, plus I have to find that pickle ship, uh, the ship that looks like a pickle. And Nancy goes, I fell on the other house, the Limehouse, Limehouse Green Station. And good luck getting it to it because it's guarded by uh, people. And the doctor goes, well, I got to get to it. And he goes, she goes, well, you could talk to somebody first, the doctor. And that was more of a trailer moment, I guess. Uh, but it was pretty cool to be able to, like, at first be like, wait, he, the doctor has to talk to the doctor. Is it another doctor? Uh, then we have uh, Jack and Rose drinking champagne on, a, on an ice-like ship. Uh, and Rose goes, uh, I get half the road. And he goes, no, we're doing business. She goes, this isn't business, it's champagne. He goes, I can't do business with a clear head. And he starts talking in riddles. He says, can you negotiate with me? And she goes, she tries to play along. I go, oh, yeah, what do you want to negotiate? He goes, something for you to buy. Can you make a payment? And Rose goes, well, I have to talk to my partner. And he goes, partner? And she goes, yeah, I got to get back to him. And he goes, him? 
And Rose goes, so she says, for she goes, well, do you, by the way, do you have the time? And he like uses his, uh, kind of upgraded psychic screwdriver or whatever to turn Big Ben on, like some smooth move. And Rose even says, okay, that was Flash. That was on the Flash side. And the doctor, or this Jack kind of um, makes a move on Rose. And he goes, who goes when you say companion partner, uh, what do you mean? And Rose goes, uh, okay, I'm just trying to think straight-headed here. On a spaceship during, you know, the WW, she goes, do you really think this is the best time to uh, uh, d- not discuss business? And then he walks away and, and he says, oh, perhaps not. And Rose goes, well, it's just a suggestion. And then he says, do you like Glenn Miller? And then he puts the Moonlight Serenade on uh, and they start uh, dancing and uh, he says, 1941, the height of the B-L-I-T-Z. And he goes, but a pickle ship also fell, a Chula pickle ship, uh, uh, last one in existence. Uh, and he goes, everything's on it, because and I know because I parked it. And he says, if the, this is why they're dancing. He says, if the agency has the right price, I can get it. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to um, make it go bye-bye. You got two hours or two days or something. And he goes, how about payment? And she goes, do you know what I think? Uh, and he goes, what? And he goes, she says, uh, oh, I don't know. I, I don't know what I was thinking about. And the doctor goes, two hours arose uh, uh, to figure it out. And she goes, promises, promises. And he goes, are you even listening? And then she goes, yeah, so what are you, a free, you were a time agent and now you're a freelancer? And he goes, I'm a tough guy, Rose. I'm, a, I'm not a hero. I'm an anti-hero. And she goes, I bet you think of yourself that way. And he goes, so is this companion of yours handle the business? And she goes, well, I delegate. Goes, but yeah, sometimes. And he, he goes, well, maybe we should go get him. And Rose goes, how are you going to do that? And he goes, well, I'll scan for some alien tech. Uh, and Rose goes, finally, a professional. It's kind of funny. And uh, next we have a doctor and and Nancy, and the doctor has some, like, high-tech binoc uh, opera glasses, too. Not as high-tech as Jack's, but uh, his are brass, I think. And the doctor is really, like, as I said, thematically, this makes sense, but also personally, he's very curious and caring about Nancy. Uh, Because she says, just go check and talk to the doctor. Because uh, after you find out, you might not want that pickle ship. Uh, but then she's like, I got to get out of here. And the doctor goes, where are you going? She goes, to get food for the kids. Uh, and the doctor goes, can I ask you a question? Like, why Why do you do it? Uh, why are you so caring and helpful? Uh, and she goes, what do you mean? He goes, well, you're looking after all those kids. Uh, maybe it's to make up for something. And she goes, yeah, I miss my brother. Uh, he's, he, he like, uh, is living in the country on a farm, running around all the time. And the doctor goes, oh. And she goes, yeah, yeah, so I miss him. So, I, you know, I like to be around other kids so I see him again. And the doctor goes, amazing. And Nancy goes, how so? And the doctor says, well, 1941, and you're the underdog, uh, you know, dominoes are falling. This is where you get to the pro message. Uh, he goes, one tiny, damp little island says, no, not here. A mouse in front of a lion. And he says, you're the maze. You're amazing. A lot of you. Uh, he goes, I don't know how other people feel about you, but whoa, boy, you're courageous. Uh, now off you go. Save the world, Nancy. And so that was a sweet moment. I saw it. Uh, Nancy and Brits, I put it, I, then the doctor meets the doctor and it was, it was it, like, I would tell you now, it was like a little bit anticlimactic cause it wasn't, it was just a doctor and they're at like a sleep, like a sleep lab, believe it or not. And all of the, uh, unexpected things, and especially in, uh, the midst of the blitz, uh, it's a sleep, a sleep, a sleep lab and this doctor studying snoring but a very special kind of snoring, which uh, ties into the plot. 
And the doctor can't believe all these people are snoring and their snore is saying like this kind of Three Stooges-esque snore where everybody says, uh, they don't want to do the snore, but it's like, uh, mm, mommy, mm, like a snore like that, but a little bit more like a Three Stooges level snore, but you know, might, you know, I got to make a sleep podcast. But everybody's doing that same snore, and the doctor's like, everybody in a sleep test is snoring that way. And the doctor goes, why do you think uh, they're snoring that way? But they're asleep, and the doctor goes, only kind of. Uh, and he goes, I'm, uh, he goes, are you the doctor? He goes, yeah, Dr. Dr. Constantine, who are you? He goes, friend of Nancy's. Uh, he goes, oh, Nancy, you must be looking for that pickle ship then. And the doctor goes, did you say pickle ship or pickle chip? And the Constantine says, ship, uh, what do you know about it? And the doctor goes, I was just asking around. And he goes, what do you know about it? And the Constantine goes, I'm pretty sure it's causing the snoring situation. Because uh, when it came, that's when everybody started, went to sleep uh, and started snoring in unison. And the doctor goes, it seems like you're about to start snoring. And he, he goes, none of this is even possible. And he goes, yeah, I don't think it is. It's strange. Uh, and then Dr. Constance, he says, are you a doctor? And the doctor doctor says, uh, I have my moments. And he goes, Can, he goes, go ahead, really listen to their snores and, and even their breathing. And the doctor does. He says, all of their breathing is in sync in the same snore, snore, snore. Mommy, inhale, is a saying mommy too, but that's too, you know, too much for this show. He goes, I can't believe it. Every single one, not possible. And Dr. Constance, he says, this is some sort of snortagion, a contagious snore, uh, like a sympathetic vibration, but with snoring. And not, again, counterintuitive, not even possible. And he goes, identical snores. He goes, when did it start? And the doctor goes, again, when the pickle ship came. First it was this one kid. Then it was everybody. Everybody started snoring the same. Everybody started breathing in, in, inside and out. Uh, and the doctor goes, well, what wakes him up? He goes, I, I get I, a chance to play a game, like a hide-and-go-seek level game called Go Chasing, Go Chasing Mommy. And then everybody says, are we playing? Everybody sits up. They say, what, we're going to play the game? Uh, you got to be kidding me. This is great. He goes, the doctor goes, what are you, the only person helping out with these snores? He goes, yeah. He goes, I'm, I'm a doctor. I got to help. And doctor, the doctor says, I know. And the doctor says, we can't keep, this snortagion's going to cause everybody to snore in London. He goes, so go up to the shop floor and find Nancy. And he goes, Nancy, why? He goes, it's her brother. He's out there, but he goes, he, he's snoring. He goes, he's not just playing hide and seek. He's snoring, ma, 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 me. And then Dr. Constantine falls asleep, uh, which is, the doctor says, holy cow, I thought we were going to figure something out, and you just fell asleep on me. Uh, Dr. Top Floor falls asleep, snores. Mommy is a snorer. Nancy's Nancy's brother snore then Jack and Rose show up but Rose is still playing uh with Jack so they say hello they meet in the hallway and Jack goes hey good evening I'm Jack Harkness uh heard all about you and Rose goes he knows we're time agents uh, and the doctor goes huh and Jack goes pleasure to meet you Mr. Spock and he pats doctor, the doctor, and then the doctor goes, Mr. Spock. And the Rose goes, and this is important. I don't know if they did this in other ones, but she goes, well, what was I supposed to say? You don't have a name. Uh, don't you ever get tired of doctor? Doctor who? Uh, so I thought that was cool. And then the doctor, the doctor says, how am I doing? Well, nine centuries later, I'm still doing my best. Uh, he goes, what are you, he goes, what are you doing? We're just going to stroll around here. And Rose goes, uh, uh, I, I, you do strolling. I flew by barrage balloon. And the doctor goes, what? 
And then Rose goes, what's a chula pickle ship? And the doctor goes, a chula pickle ship? Holy mackerel. Uh, then we jump back to Nancy. She is playing hide-and-seek with her brother, who's, I guess, is sleepwalking and playing hide-and-seek, is snoring to mommy. And Nancy's really trying to find, like, hide, because I guess if you get tagged, you could, you go, you snore. And she's like, well, I can't be sleeping when I'm collecting food for all these other kids, so I have a duty to do. Uh, then we hop back uh, to the doctor. Let's see, Nancy's brother... Uh, Doctor Who, Barrage Balloon, a Chula Ship. Uh, okay, so then they go back into the sleep lab and they see everybody. And uh, Jack goes, this is impossible. Everybody's snoring in unison. How'd this happen? And the doctor goes, tell me more about the Chula Ship. And uh, Jack goes, what? Uh, and Rose goes, he stole it uh, and parked it somewhere. And unless we pay him, he's going to get rid of it. And the doctor goes, what kind of chula ship is it? And the, uh, uh, Jack goes, it wasn't a pickle. It was a chula tube ship, not a pickle ship. Uh, and he goes, that's what you chase through the time vortex. Uh, a tube ship, not a pickle ship. He goes, I wanted you to think it was a pickle ship, but it's empty. No pickles. Uh, nothing but a shell. Because they saw your uh, retro time vehicle. Uh, nice panels, by the way, and I tried to throw some bait at you. And Rose goes, bait? And he goes, yeah, I was going to try to sell it to you and then get rid of it before you, you found out it was just a tube ship and not a pickle ship. And Rose goes, but you said it was a pickle ship. He goes, Pick, pickle ship, tube, tube ship. He goes, I was conning you. I'm a con man. I thought you were time agents, but you're not, right? And Rose goes, no, we're just freelancers. He goes, you should have known the way you're dressed. I mean, flag girl and U-boat captain uh, with the doctor's leather jacket and Rose's shirt. She kind of looks at it. And he goes, well, this snoring has nothing to do with the ship. And Rosa doesn't buy it. So she says, doctor, what do you think? And everybody starts being uh, snoring and d decides to play uh, whatever, uh, hide and go mommy or whatever, chase the mommy. And the doctor goes, something's going on. He goes, this is a snortagin. And he goes, I've never seen it before, so I don't understand why it's happening. What's the point? And then we see Nancy and her brother uh, trying to, like, Nancy trying to get out of chasing. And Rose goes, I don't know. Like, And so then they start playing chase with all the, the people that are asleep. And, and Rose is like, how do we play tag if people, if the other team's asleep? And the doctor goes, huh, I don't know. And we get some cuts back to Nancy playing hide and seek or chase and Rose and the doctor and Jack playing chase. And it switches back and forth with Nancy trying to say, hey, why don't you just wake up? Let's stop playing chase and eat some turkey. And then the doctor, Rose, and Jack trying to wake everybody up and saying, quit being turkeys, we're trying to wake you up and not play hide-and-seek. Uh, and then the episode actually comes to an end because it's a two-parter, which I didn't realize when I started it. So will uh, will the sleeping, sleepwalking mommy snores uh, uh, keep snoring, or will the doctor wake them up? Uh, uh, and what does a pickle ship even have to do with it? We'll find out next time. Uh, so let's see, a couple of things to give up in the episode where Time Agent, which is actually like a fan, now a fan YouTube series uh, uh, by Well Built Productions, uh, it, it depicts the adventures of the Time Agents, uh, traveling uh, Time Agents uh, who deal with uh, ET type stuff, uh, loosely based on, uh, oh, so the show's loose, loosely based on, so I don't know if Time Agents will turn up uh, again. Uh, I don't want to talk too much about Time Agent because I don't want to ruin it in case everybody finds out. Let's see what Time Agency says on the TARDIS wiki. Uh, time Agency was an organization founded to fill the vacuum of power left by the Time Lords. Uh, originated around the 49th century, and it was shut down after the 52nd uh, a century and employed humans called Time Agents who used vortex manipulators to travel through time. Uh, agent also agency also dealt with time loops by containing them in bubble universes. Uh, 
Uh, agent's purpose is to change without interfering, leaving an effect with no evidence of cause. Untraceable, undetectable, invisible. Agents do not exist. Uh, so let's see some other things where Rose said uh, uh, it's on the flash side, which uh, it, when you look at any, anything on Google, it just comes up for words for uh, fla- the flash. Uh, but you could assume it means something cool. Uh, then, uh, uh, sorry, old man. I couldn't find any good examples of the origin of that. Uh, Mauve, M-A-U-V-E, uh, is a pale pale purple color. Uh, it was a pale purple aniline dye prepared by William H. Perkin in 1856. Uh, it was the first uh, synthetic dye stuff. It's uh, named after the mallow flower, and the first use of mauve as a color was in 1796 to 98, according to Oxford English da- Dictionary, but may have been rare before 1859. Uh, I like to that Doctor Who reference in there. Uh, so some good stuff about uh, Spock in the TARDIS uh, wiki here. Uh, uh, Spock was a character, Rose Tyler, associated with a more professional use of uh, technology while in London. Uh, she bemoaned the doctor's reliance on the sonic screwdriver and conversation as in his primary investigative tools. Uh, Donna Noble also seems familiar with the character of Spock. Um, in a parallel universe, uh, St- Spock was a crew member of the USS Enterprise in the 23rd century. On one occasion, the 11th Doctor recalled memories of his fourth incarnation meeting up with Spock and the crew of the USS Enterprise uh, to deal with some cyber persons. A fictional character named Spock uh, appeared in the science fiction television series uh, Star Trek in the Doctor's Universe. Uh, When the third Doctor told Sergeant John Benton he had visited a parallel universe, Benton Benton asked, you mean like a Star Trek episode where Spock had a beard? Uh, This character was played by Leonard Nimoy and said at least once the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. Uh, Spock's brain was an episode that uh, other many multiple Star Trek episode character, I mean multiple Doctor Who characters had seen. Uh, or even called it their favorite episode. I think Spock's Brain is also the name of a fish, uh, obscure fish song, or something. It's something else, some other major reference I'm missing. Uh, there's mentions of Spock in multiple episodes, uh, and they treat him as uh, sometimes they treat him as a real individual in alternate dimension, and other times as a fictional character. And Leonard Nimoy was even considered to direct a 1996 uh, TV movie, uh, Doctor Who, Inth Doctor. It's in that book. Uh, and so that's a little bit about Doctor Who and Spock. And uh, so, yeah, give, make it flash and give me some Spock uh, as you snuggle in and get comfy and cozy. Good night. I uh, want to thank everybody who said hi on YouTube. Helena. Uh, Liz Libby, uh, thanks, thanks, and good night. Uh, Bearing Beauty, thanks, thanks, and good night. Uh, Challenge, uh, thanks, thanks, and good night. Laura, thanks, thanks, and good night. Uh, Shauna, thank you, thanks, and good night. Uh, Super, thank you, thanks, and good night. Uh, uh, Janice, thank you, thanks, and good night. Uh, Jessica, uh, thank you, thanks, and good night. Kiki and Asal, thank you, thanks, and good night. Uh, Maddie, thank you, thanks, and good night. Uh, Tyler, thanks, uh, thanks, and good night. Uh, Asma, thanks, thanks, and good night. Uh, Bean, thank you, thanks, and good night. Uh, Random, thanks, thanks, and good night. Uh, Jess, uh, thanks, thanks, and good night. Helena, thanks, thanks, and good night. Uh, Toaster, thank you, thanks, and good night. Diego, thanks, and good night. Uh, Shannon, uh, thanks, thanks, and good night. Uh, Shani, thanks, thanks, and good night. Lizzie, thanks, and good night. Window, thanks, and good night. SUV, thank you, and good night. Ox, uh, thank you, and good night. Uh, Oren, uh, thanks, thanks, and good night. Helani, thanks, thanks, and good night. 
Uh, Vortex, thanks, thanks, good night. Winter, thank you and good night. My Sosa, thanks, thanks, and good night. 7J7, uh, thanks, thanks, and good night. Uh, Jimmy, thank you and good night. Danny, thanks, thanks, and good night. Uh, Captain, thank you and good night. Uh, Kimmy, thank you, thanks, and good night. Uh, David, thank you, thanks, and good night. Joe, uh, thank you, thanks, and good night. Uh, em- em- Amelia, thank you, thanks, and good night. Born, thanks, and good night. And E, uh, thanks, and good night. Oh, wait, J, J, thank you, good night. Ninny, thanks, and good night. Lil, thanks, and good night. Holly, thank you, and good night. Joaquin, thanks, and good night. Uh, question mark, thanks, and good night. Laura, thanks, and good night. And Lizzie, thanks, thanks everybody for uh, commenting on YouTube uh, and the support and uh, good night.